Jenna Town, peanut butter Jenna Town, peanut butter Jenna, peanut butter Jenna, peanut butter Jenna with a baseball bat, peanut butter Jenna, peanut butter Jenna, peanut butter Jenna with a baseball bat. Greetings, humans! Today's Black History highlight is George Washington Carver. He is probably the most well-known um, black scientist in history. I'm going to hazard to say that. Um, and most people know him for peanut butter. Okay? But we'll talk about peanut butter a little later. Okay? So, George Washington Carver was born, just George, in approximately January of 1864. I say approximately because he was born uh, into slavery in Missouri on the Carver Plantation. But he was born to a Giles and Mary. Uh, his father probably died before he was born in a farming accident, um, but his mother was there um, upon his arrival into this world. Uh, about a week after he was born, his mother, himself, and his sister were kidnapped uh, by Confederates and sold to a plantation in Kentucky. But uh, eventually, at the end of the war, in uh, the end of the Civil War, excuse me, an agent of the Carver family uh, where they were able, kind of tracked them down and was able able to recover just George. So I have no idea what happened to his mother or sister. Um, in 1865, the end of the Civil War again, um, Moses and Susan Carver decided uh, to keep George and his older brother James. Now mind you, the Carvers lived on a pretty small farm. They weren't like those giant acres and acres plantations that, you know, may come to your mind when you think plantations, so keep that in your noggin. Um, so yeah, they kept his older brother, James, and himself. Uh, he was taught to, he and his brother were taught to read and write by Susan Carver. Um, as a boy, he was inquisitive and really into plants and just all that stuff. Like, he even be, uh, was known as the plant doctor um, to the Carvers and to other families around because of his experiments with pesticides, fungicides, and soil conditioners to kind of get the best crops out of um, the back garden in the house. Okay, so eventually uh, he, I have conflicting information in sources. One source says that uh, Susan really kind of forced her husband to find him a school, and the other sources just say he ended up at this school, um, but any way you slice it, he ended up walking 10 miles to school a few times a week, um, because none of the schools nearby would take a black child, so he went to the school for African American children in Neosho, Neosho, Kansas? Okay. At age 13, he moved to Minneapolis, Kansas for high school. He earned tuition by working in a kitchen at a local hotel, um, making up recipes and even entering baking competitions. So, you know, he could cook. Uh, he graduated from high school in 1880. Uh, he applied, but then he set his sights on college, and he applied and was accepted and even given full scholarship to the Highland Presbyterian College in Kansas. But when he arrived, they didn't realize from his application that he was black, so when he arrived, they promptly revoked the scholarship and the acceptance from the institution. So that caused young George to do a bit of wandering. Um, he did odd jobs, worked on the railroad, did some cowboyish stuff in New Mexico, um, all the while saving money and looking for schools to attend. 
but in 1888, he was the first black student to be accepted to Simpson College in Indianola, Illinois, Iowa, Indianola, Iowa, sorry. Um, there he studied art and music. Some sources say that he planned to teach, but he but all sources agree that while he was there um, doing music and art, he practiced his art by doing really detailed drawings of plants. One of his teachers suggested that he go to the botany program at the Iowa Agricultural College, which is now Iowa State. Um, so in 1884, I'm sorry, in 1894, he became the first African-American student to earn his Bachelor of Science degree from the Iowa Agricultural College, um, and that was a degree in botany. He was um, prompted to stay on at the school and work on his master's, and during that time, um, as the director of Illinois, Iowa State Experimental Station, he discovered two types of fungi, which are named after him. Um, and really became well known as a botanist during that time. Um, he received his master's in botany in 1896. Okay, so he had this excellent reputation that stemmed from the research he did on crop rotation as well as soybeans to replenish the nitrogen in the soil. In April of 1896, he was invited to Tuskegee by Dr. Uh, by Booker T. Washington. Um, and I wanted to read for you a quote that uh, comes from the letter that he sent, okay? And it says, this is from uh, Booker T. Washington to, at this point, George Carver. He became known as George Carver when he went to school. Um, and it says, I cannot offer you money, position, or fame. The first two you have, the last from the position you now occupy, you will no doubt achieve. These things I now ask you to give up. I offer you in their place work, hard work, the task of bringing people from degradation, poverty, and waste to full manhood. Your department exists only on paper and your laboratory will have to be in your head. And with all that, okay, George still said, yep, and went right on to Tuskegee, okay? There, he basically built the agricultural department from the ground up, uh, bringing in faculty and creating his own curriculum. Uh, he researched, they did research and training in crop rotation, alternate cash crops in areas that were really um, heavily farmed by cotton. And this was important because the black people had to harvest under really difficult conditions, um, being that there was a bull weevil issue in 1892 and that it was just hard. Um, there were, oh, and he also worked to diversify the crops to help stabilize the people uh, that really had very similar backgrounds to himself, okay? So, in addition to doing traditional classroom teaching in a, um, at the Tuskegee Institute, he also, had the Jessup wagon, which was named for the um, the man who donated the money for the wagon. Okay, and this was basically a wagon he took and went to different rural areas and talked to the people. Okay, and demonstrated things and taught them where they were. Sometimes you got to take the information to the people. You can't wait for the people to come to get it because they might not have the ability. Right. So he took the information to the people. Okay. He decided on peanuts as an excellent um, thing for crop rotation in the south because it was an easy crop to grow and it had excellent nitrogen fixing so it really replenished the soil um, and the people were really happy with the large with the high yield cotton um, with the high cotton yields that they were receiving from doing this cotton peanut uh, rotation but they had more peanuts than they knew what to do with. They were literally rotting in storehouses. So George, being the clever man that he was, went to the lab, okay? 
and in his lab he invented more than 300 products for just peanuts. Just with the use of peanuts, can you imagine? Let me tell you some of them. We've got flour, paste, you know, like glue, insulation, paper, wallboard, wood stain, soap, shaving cream, lotion, plastics, a form of gasoline he worked on, antiseptics, laxatives, and treatments for goiter. And among this, people always like to throw in peanut butter, okay? Um, peanut butter is actually a really, really old invention. Um, there are even uh, evidences of peanut butter being invented in 950 BC by the Incans. But George definitely did come up with a version of peanut butter, okay? So I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as the peanut butter that we use today or anything like that, but he had his own version. Um, okay, but he also worked on sweet potatoes, soybeans, and pecans, and trying to find different benefits for those things, okay? So he's got peanuts under his belt, but he also went with sweet potatoes, soybeans, and pecans, okay? So during World War One. Um, he was asked by Ford to help invent a sort of rubber from peanuts. So again, rubber and peanuts. Um, and he invented over 30 different colors of dye from just different Alabama soils. Okay, so helping out the textile industry because dyes are expensive. And if you can use them with things that you can find in your own country, then voila. Okay, so that was his war efforts. And after the war ended, um, he added Washington to his name in honor of Booker T. Washington. Okay, so before he was just George, he was born just George. He was uh, Carver's George during his childhood, because again, pretty much slave. Um, when he went to school, he became George Carver. And now, after World War One, he is George Washington Carver, the name that we currently know. So, after the war, he was really, really highly regarded by people everywhere, okay? He was asked um, by the President Teddy Roosevelt um, about national agricultural issues, he was, in 1916, he became a member of the British Royal Society of Arts, which is a very, very rare thing for an American to be a member of, any American, okay? He went to India to speak to Mahatma Gandhi about agriculture and nutrition in developing countries. So, your man was doing it big, okay? And so, in 1920, uh, he gave a speech to the peanut growers, association about the many uses of peanuts okay and then in 1921 he was invited to speak before congress about um raising a tariff on foreign peanuts because you know trying to protect this new peanutty south that we had and in 1922 the tariff for on foreign peanuts was established but um in 1934, January 5th, oh, I'm sorry, 1934, in January 5th, 1953, George Washington Carver died. He left his entire life savings, an approximate six, oh, more than $60,000, to found the George Washington Carver Institute for Agriculture at Tuskegee, um, got, ugh, president uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, dedicated funds to erect a, a monument near uh, Diamond, Missouri, which is where um, the plantation that he grew up on was. He had stamps in with his face on them. He had a half dollar coin minted. There are two military vessels in his honor. There are many, many scholarships in school named at schools named after him. Um, yeah, in January 5th is George Washington Carver, uh, res, uh, recognition day. 
So I don't know why we don't celebrate that as well. It should be noted that Carver only had three patents. Okay? Of all the things he invented, just with peanuts. Okay? You've got 300 plus things with peanuts. 1% of that. Less than 1%. He patented. And I, the reason for it is in this quote. It is not the style of clothes one wears. Neither the kind of automobile one drives, nor the amount of money one has in that, in the bank that counts. These mean nothing. It is simply service that measures success. And by those standards, Mr. Carver, you are incredibly, incredibly successful. And there is so much we have to thank you for. So thank you for watching, and thank you Mr. Carver, for all that you did for this nation, its people, and its people of color. Thanks for making it a peanuttier self. So thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, for episode four. Bye!